Welcome back to our town centre garden. If we are lucky, we might see some regular friends and even some unusual new friends. We are concentrating on the birds today as they have gone through many changes in front of my eyes and luckily in front of my camera. At times, the creatures here can experience moments of calm living in the slow lane. They should make the most of these moments of peace because at any time things can change very quickly around here. A robin juvenile, out with their parent, is now brave enough to explore the neighbourhood and today's lessons are being taught in my garden. These house sparrows are nesting in the bushes ahead and they are possibly reacting to a threat usually a cat. There is honeysuckle surrounding their home, making their stay very fragrant. The sparrows seem to quieten down, but they keep a watchful eye around their home. The Dunnock is now a frequent visitor to the area and this year is actually feeding on my bird table. So for the first time I am able to capture good images of these excellent little birds. The house sparrows are still keeping a close eye out for any threats. Is it a cat that is bothering them or is it something else? In the last episode the magpie pair was very curious about the blackbird nest in that same honeysuckle bush. When birds look up like that, it is because they are nervous about being attacked from the sky, so I assume the magpies could still be lurking around. The little dunnock male makes the most of this quiet interval, grabbing a quick bite before the bowl is invaded again. Meanwhile, the sparrows are still keeping their vigilant watch over the area. They stay like this for half an hour. As soon as there is a quiet moment, the great tit moves in. The very recognisable sound of the house sparrow It is unusual to see a single nesting pair here, as these birds like to live in dense bushes with hundreds of their fellow sparrows, forming a tower block of noisy neighbours. I nicknamed this great tip Butch. He really liked the new bird feeder I added to the garden, and after that, he became a frequent and rather aggressive visitor. He is usually accompanied by the smaller blue tits, but today, this little fellow is owning the bird table.
At last, a glimpse of the robin parent. We can hear its babies saying peep, peep in the background. Whenever a parent is near the babies, a lot of communication ensues. This baby arrived too late to be given food and will now have to feed itself. The blackbirds often sit in the shadows to sometimes rest or to sing. Starlings live all over the church steeple nearby. Occasionally, one will visit the table, making no fuss and drawing no attention to the meal they have found. Other times, starlings will descend upon my garden in great flocks, and the noise can be incredible. This is a male starling, identifiable by the blue markings at the base of the bill. Female starlings have a pink base. If a starling is alone, other birds, like this wood pigeon, have a chance to share the feast. The robin parent sounds off in the tree while the baby examines and chooses the right yummy food. There are perils lurking around this garden. Predators who make themselves known regularly. This magpie is one of a pair that is nesting in the mountain ash tree to the right of this view. The magpies knock on nearby objects loudly with their beaks. I think this is an additional noise that they can use in their arsenal of warning sounds. Sudden loud noises make creatures jump and they may leave the area. This baby robin has a lot to learn about the dangers of other birds. Wood pigeons are part of a select group of birds that can suck water straight up into their throats. All other birds capture water in their beaks and toss their heads back to allow the fluid to trickle down into their stomachs. The little robin waits patiently on the old incinerator, looking, listening and testing its wings. Then it spots its sibling.
The little robin investigates the remnants of the food and discarded seed husks, which teaches it all about good and bad choices. Choose quickly or you may not have time for a meal. Butch the Great Tit is back to show who is the boss of this food table. And the little robin is back to the old incinerator to wait for Butch to leave. The little robin is unsettled and is not feeding. What is he looking at? Butch is still hanging around. Don't fall off a feeder, now you have it to yourself. The doves have yet to make an appearance in this episode. There is a lot of competition for food in the garden this year, so around the house on many roofs is a queue of hungry birds waiting for a space to open up. The noisy town centre doesn't seem to bother the birds, but sudden noises nearby might make them jump. Back to checking and testing the scraps in the food bowl. Maybe mum and dad have something better to offer. With long legs built perfectly for hopping, the little robin practices moving on the water bowl. Is there anything good left to eat? Using their wings for balance and testing their agility, young robins need fast reflexes in order to avoid swift attacks, which could come from anywhere around them. With nesting magpies nearby and countless pet cats, it is required to have fast reflexes or face certain death. The magpies are busy concentrating today on a certain part of the tall mountain ash tree. A quiet churring sound can be heard from the babies as the parent approaches.
The starlings are restless when the magpies return to their tree. The magpies do not tolerate the starlings and see them off aggressively. With the magpie busy seeing off starlings, a limping wood pigeon creeps along the fence towards the feeder, hoping no one will notice. He tentatively hops onto the feeder. Keeping an eye out for the clattering corvid. Have the magpies gone? Is it safe to feed? The bird table can be overrun and sometimes everyone can get a little testy. The wood pigeon stands his ground and even pecks at the head of the nearest starling. As fearless as ever, the starlings take over completely. They chatter much more quietly now amongst themselves. The magpie's return has caused the feeder to empty in a flash of wings and feathers. It's the large male with a very long tail and he is curious about the honeysuckle and the nest within. A cat quietly slips through the space unnoticed this time. There really isn't much left to eat in the food bowl. The little robin throws many husks away as it sorts through the confusing shapes. The parents do not seem to want to feed the babies and may be encouraging them to feed themselves. but baby always peeps to get their attention, just in case there is free grub. The magpies are making short zap sounds and a distant blackbird is also making some short alarm calls. The little robin glances around nervously and snatches quick bites making its parents very proud. It might not be safe to eat right now
When a bird sits very still, it may be because they fear attack from something nearby, or they need to burp. The threatening sounds of the alarm calls have been replaced by the sweet warble of the wren. The little robin is still cautious about settling down to eat. Maybe the seagulls mobbing a bird of prey is what is making everyone so nervous. The starlings are protesting about the patrolling magpie who is guarding the bird feeder. Many of the visiting birds have gone crazy for the suet and seed filled coconut. So much so, I had to move it somewhere only the bold birds will go. And then it happened. For the first time in 20 years of living here, a jackdaw visits my garden. He becomes a fairly frequent visitor, appearing a couple of times a week from May. Jackdaws are in the same family of corvids as magpies, crows, jays and ravens. From a distance, they look like the biggest blackbird you've ever seen. When they come closer, you see the silver grey hood and markings and the startling big eye, which sometimes appears pale yellow and other times pale blue. This jackdaw is lucky the magpies aren't home. Even larger birds like this have to keep an eye out for danger from other birds and the dreaded house cats. As the jackdaw turns, we can see the iridescence on his wings, similar to its cousins. The iridescence is a trick of our eyes, interpreting black feathers and the weird molecules that make up the black colours as an oil-like sheen with rainbows in it. This is not oil though, it's just a trick of the light. This rainbow sheen is visible on starlings too. It's interesting to watch their body language, the way that they use their wings to instruct others around them. The starlings fight over the coconut and they all chatter continuously and rather loudly. They also use their wings for balance.
They are amazing climbers and can ravage a coconut in a few hours if uninterrupted. A young blue tit inspects the scene. It is tiny and a little bit scruffy because some raindrops fell on his head and he is a fledgling and hasn't quite got all his colours yet. It's nervous and reluctant to fly into a safe spot to eat its lovely mouthful. Butch is back and again dominating the space. He spends a long time just chowing down. This behaviour is quite unlike all the other great tits I have seen. They nearly always snatch a large bite and take it to the safety of the bushes to eat. The new feeder is to the right of this view. I suspect this is the reason that Butch has become such a frequent visitor to my garden. The coconut is also something Butch enjoys, if he's not just chowing down in the bowl like always. But he's not that willing to share. We can hear the wings of a wood pigeon flapping against foliage and flying around. Something starts making him nervous. And now we can see the reason for all that noise. This wood pigeon is nesting nearby. The young blue tit tries to have a go on the suet balls, but isn't allowed to relax. Butch will see to that. It's only when you see the fledgling next to the adult that you can actually see how tiny it is. It's out of luck. The parent leaves it to fend for itself. This is excellent training for a young bird. The young blue tit briskly gobbles up as many crumbs as it can while the ominous sound of the starlings approach. This inexperienced little fellow is risking a lot spending so much time out in the open like this.
When it gets a fright up close and personal in the future, it will learn a little more caution and spend less time exposed. The bright and cheery song of the Dunnock fills our ears. It always impresses me that even though they are small, their songs can be very loud. Butch enjoys his final meal for the day. And there we must end the episode. It has been interesting to see the different changes in the garden as different birds seem to dominate the space. It's not hard to find a story because the birds are writing it for themselves right in front of our eyes. We just have to remember how to see, see. Until next time, thanks for watching.